Hey guys, welcome to my three week intro to Ableton Live course. We're gonna be learning how to program MIDI, record audio, use virtual instruments and drum kits, convert and warp audio. We'll be mapping, mixing, arranging, troubleshooting, and managing our digital files. There's no way I can touch upon everything in the brief three weeks that we have together. So it's my job to get started and it's your job to take the ball and run with it. So I urge you to seek out other references like forums and tutorials and videos if there's something that I'm talking about that you wanna know more about. Also, I commend you for being the type of person that finds a place like this and comes to learn. I basically taught myself the majority of what I know by Googling stuff, <laughs> and I feel privileged to be the person that's here giving you this information, and I'm excited for this journey. So now begins our introductory look at Ableton Live via the Coursera platform on behalf of Berkeley, of which I am a very proud alumni. Let's start by taking a brief look at Ableton's many windows. For those of you who are new users, some of this may seem foreign to you, but know that we're gonna take a closer look at everything as the course continues and that I'm gonna be there with you the whole time. So don't get overwhelmed, just try to absorb as much as you can and know that you can watch the video as many times as you need to. So let's start. All right, so after you've downloaded and installed the application onto your computer's hard drive, we're gonna go and open live. So by default, Ableton launches into a window called Session View, which is what we're currently looking at. And it gives us an empty set containing two MIDI tracks labeled one MIDI, two MIDI, as well as three, uh, two audio tracks labeled three audio and four audio. So the number's just indicating to us which order the tracks are coming in from left to right, and it's also letting us know whether it's an audio or a MIDI track. Below the track's titles are a number of rectangles, which are empty cells, and these are the spaces where we'll eventually be composing and storing you know, our ideas as we compose them. Down below, we've got some options as to where we're receiving and sending signal monitoring options and listening options. Here we're gonna adjust sends, volume fades, turning a track on or off, soloing a track, and record enabling a track. To the right over here, we've got two return tracks labeled A reverb and B delay, which are the two defaults. And to the far right is the master track, which currently all of the other tracks are feeding into the master. To the right, down to the bottom, we've got a lot of yellow and black circles, which as you select or unselect them, you'll see different things being displayed, these parameters I was just talking about. So depending on what you do or don't want to see, you can hide and show things this way. To the left of Session View, this is Live's browser, which is where we're going to find our sounds, virtual instruments, effects, and, and a lot of other really useful things. By clicking on any of the categories, you'll see that they've got categories inside of them, which can be unfolded by clicking on the triangle to the left of any folder's name. So if we go into sounds here, you'll see that there's quite a few options. And if we unfolded one of the categories, we'd actually be looking at the sounds themselves. And if I click on one of these here, we're given a preview of what the sound is like. If you're not hearing a preview, you gotta make sure this little headphone icon is turned blue, otherwise you're not gonna be hearing anything. And additionally, over here, there's a blue knob with a headphone icon on it, which if you click and drag up or down, this is going to adjust the volume of those previews. Along the top of the interface, starting from the left here, we have the option to tap out our tempo. Uh, we can manually type it in here. We can change the meter and turn the metronome on and off. And continuing over to the right, this is an area referred to as the transport, which is something that we'll get into deeper in another video. At the bottom left over here is Info View, which is a really helpful tool for those of you who are new users. So basically, Info View is going to give you detailed information about whatever your cursor or mouse is currently hovering over. So for instance, if I go up to the word sounds here, Live's Info View displays text that reads, Click here to view all your instrument racks and instrument presets organized by the type of sound they make. This window is going to be extremely helpful to you as we move forward through the course, so you can always refer back to it if you're confused about what's going on. 
Next to info view is detail view, which is where we're going to drag and drop our instruments, effects, and be able to take a closer look at audio waveforms and MIDI clips. So if you notice here, this triangle action on the corners is going to hide or show different any of these different browser windows that, that I was just talking about. And this is a reoccurring theme with the, the triangles being able to open and close or unfold different areas. When we press tab on our computer's keyboard, session view flips into something called arrangement view. And this may be a more familiar landscape to those of you who have worked in other digital audio workstations or apps. Arrangement view is where we're going to find our timeline, which is a place where our musical ideas will eventually come together to form the beginning, middle, and end of our compositions. And you can see that each channel's label and information is represented on the right here horizontally, as opposed to the vertical representation that we were previously looking at in session view. I'm just going to quickly flip back over so you can see here is one MIDI, and if I press tab again and enter arrangement view, it's represented horizontally here is one MIDI as well. Across the top of arrangement view, you'll see numbers dictating measures or bars as time passes along, and along the bottom here, we're looking at uh, minute and second markers as well. So if we hover around the numbers, you'll notice that the cursor is flipping back and forth between a pointer tool, an audio icon, and a magnifying glass icon. So if I click anywhere where this audio icon exists, playback is going to begin from that point. So you can see our cursor currently just slowly crawling across this timeline here. And if I hover wherever the magnifying glass is and I click and I hold, I can drag down to zoom in or drag up to zoom out. I can go left or right. And this is also something we're going to find in many other areas. Anytime you see a magnifying glass, you can click, click and drag to zoom.